Hey guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. It's Moi if you're new here. Today we are talking about apartment hunting in Paris. Two things actually I want to say. I don't really have that much furniture. I don't have anything soft that's absorbing my voice sound. So I apologize if the sound is kind of off. And second of all, I'm sitting on my air mattress and sometimes it makes really annoying sounds and we're just gonna have to ignore that because I literally have nothing else to sit on at the moment. So. This is our setup. I promise you guys I was gonna film this video. I am by no means an expert on this. I did wanna share the things that I learned over the past few months. It does just seem to be a rite of passage, like the long, arduous, painstakingly particular process. I did tour over 40 apartments, so I rounded it down to like 15 that were particularly interesting once I applied for or just like proved a point. The first thing I want to talk about is your dossier, which is basically your rental file that you submit every time you apply for an apartment. I did watch some videos that said that you should print them out, but no one really accepted them like that. Like I never gave out any dossier in person. Everyone kind of wanted it over email. The things I include in my dossier might look a little different to a normal person's because I am and freelance and also foreign, not French. First thing which I had is a copy of my ID, so I have my Irish passport. And then I had a attestation de hébergement. I'm gonna be butchering all the French pronunciations. It's like a sworn letter to prove that I'm staying somewhere in France as I'm apartment hunting. And then the next thing is your three previous payslips. Because I'm freelance, I don't have like set payslips. So I put all my different jobs I've done each month into like monthly invoices. Basically the landlord or agency just just wants to see that you are earning three times the rent of the property that you're looking at, which is quite a lot. I've heard that a lot of people here end up just <laughs> photoshopping payslips, which, you know, I would not recommend. If you do have a work contract, this is where you include it. The one that they love is a CDE, basically a contract without indefinite end. So you'll obviously be able to pay rent because you have like a set salary. We didn't have that. Also a copy of your taxes. I didn't have that because I haven't been in France long enough to start paying taxes. I did include a copy of my UK taxes just to prove that I was paying taxes and have sufficient income. And then the last thing which I included was a copy of my Garant Me certificate. For every apartment application, they want you to have a guarantor. However, they do prefer the guarantor to be French. I did find this site which a few of my foreign friends have used called Guarant Me. It's basically a website that will act as your guarantor and you just pay them a yearly fee. I think I'm paying an extra 300 euros a year which is annoying but it did, it was my only option. I'd say about 70% of the landlords agencies I talked to accepted Guarant Me. There were some landlords who are maybe slightly older, more traditional, who just wanted you to have a French guarantor. Celoge is like the main app that has all the agency apartments. Pepe, which is directly with the landlord. Le Bon Coin is also directly with the landlord. However, sometimes it can be a little bit like scammy vibes. I don't know. Pepe just seems a lot more trustworthy. There's also another website called Jeans de Confiance. You need three referrals to be able to sign up for it. And I didn't have three referrals, so I was never able to join. There is an app called Jinka which combines all of those sites onto one place. Most people were like, use Jinka, it's the best because you don't have to check all the other ones. What I realized is that there was a slight backlog on Jinka getting notifications from Celoje, Pepe, Le Bon Coin. And here, first come, first serve is basically like the rule of thumb. So I ended up having all my notifications on for the other websites. Like the minute I got an alert, I wouldn't even look at it. If it was in the right area and it was in my budget, I would just send them a message and then look at it after. With Celoje, most of the time you also have to phone call, which is so painful if you're not fluent in French, but you just have to do it. They will get so many phone calls from French people that they're not going to be looking at emails most of the time. And then there are also foreign targeted companies, Blue Ground, Vint Property, properties, home-like, lodges, and these are a lot easier to navigate. Most of the time they are fully furnished and ready to move in, but they are a lot more expensive and I was not really willing to stretch my budget that much. The most important thing was natural light. My last apartment in London, I learned the hard way. That was a north-facing apartment. An apartment that faces north means there will never be any direct sunlight. Um, so I was looking for south-facing or east or west. 
dressed. I also wanted hardwood floors. It's pretty common in Paris. I want it to be bright and like not necessarily white, but plain enough that I could make it my own. I was looking at both furnished and unfurnished, but ideally if it was unfurnished, it would have some kitchen things. Most of the time, unfurnished apartments in Europe, you have to buy your own oven, your own fridge, your own washing machine. In terms of location, all the apartments I ended up seeing were basically on Rive Droit, so right bank. I was looking pretty central, like first, second, third, fourth. Loved the Marais. Initially, I was also looking around the canal and Bastille, but towards the end of my search, I actually ended up looking more in the 9th and the 18th. I wanted to stick around 15, 16, hundred euros. I did end up seeing some apartments which were a lot more expensive, closer to 2000. I was just getting desperate so I was like okay we can spend a bit more money. I did ideally want a one bed. I also saw some two beds with the idea of it being like a bedroom office or a bedroom studio but here we are in our one room apartment and you know I'm happy. So before we get into the various apartment tours, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Lingoda. They are an online language skill which I actually used last summer whilst I was in Paris and have decided to kickstart my classes again. Being here for the past few months and making French friends has definitely helped my listening and understanding and like casual conversational skills. However, I'm still pretty hazy whenever it comes to grammar and forming sentences and all that additional vocabulary which you don't really get in a casual setting. What I love about Lingoda is that they offer 24-7 online classes with professional native level teachers. So it means that there's so much flexibility for when and where you can take the classes. Like I can just book them for different times every day if my schedule is changing and I really appreciate that you can do everything in your own time. Lingoda offer a two-month sprint challenge where you can earn 50% cash back if you attend 15 classes each month and for those who are even more competitive you can take their super sprint challenge where you get 100% cash back on all your lessons if you attend a lesson every day. If you're hoping to move to a new country or just want to improve your language abilities this is the perfect kickstarter to get back into routine. I also love incentives because self-motivation can be so difficult especially when you're trying to adopt a new habit. So if you actually want to join me on the sprint challenge or the super sprint, you can click the link in description to find out more about Lingoda and you can also use my code to get 20 euros or $25 off your registration fee. I love taking their classes last year and now that I'm feeling a little bit more settled, I'm excited to see where my French goes over the next two months and you know, parler couramment. Just about parler gourmand. Okay, we're getting there. We'll get there. <laughs> I'm gonna start off with some examples of ones that I either didn't apply for or were a little bit on the bad end. And then we're gonna go into the okay, middle ground could live here. And then we're gonna go into the good, the ones that like I wanted but didn't get. One of the first apartments I saw was this studio in the Marais. It was 15, 60 and 45 meters squared. They did have a recently refurbished kitchen and bathroom, which was great. But as you can see, it was pretty dark. Um, the windows faced into a courtyard, so it didn't get that much natural light. And also that bed. <laughs> it just didn't look that secure. It looked fun, but I don't think it would be very stable. So I didn't end up applying for this one, mostly for that reason and the fact that the light wasn't very good. The next one was another studio that I saw. This one was in the 10th. The photos of this looked amazing on the site. It was 14, 50 euros, 46 meters squared. Also, the agency said that they were happy to accept Garant me and my situation, which was great. And it was really cool because there was windows on both sides. It was like joining two buildings. So it also kind of faced into a courtyard which ended up meaning that it didn't get a lot of direct sunlight. The day I saw it was super sunny and it was pretty dark inside. The light definitely ended up being one of the main reasons why I didn't actually apply for this one. Also, there was an open bathroom, like an open shower room, which I don't mind because I'm on my own, but if I had guests and stuff. The kitchen was fitted, which was good, but there was this weird like built-in bed situation that I just didn't really understand why they did it like that and 
I would have to work around it. Then I saw this one bedroom, but it was a really small one bedroom. It was 28 meters squared in the ninth. This one was through a site called Book a Flat, which is directed more towards foreigners and foreigners who are working here. I forgot to say, the other two places I found on the Loge, it was 1520 for a very small place and the fees were a lot. It was like an extra 300 euros. I really love the oval room. You can't see it in the video, but in the photo, they had the curtains drawn back and it's like a stained glass oval bedroom, which was really sick. However, the vibes weren't for me and there were so many people viewing it. I was like, one of these people needs it more than me. In a similar vein of ones that I didn't apply for because they were too corporate, there was this one bedroom in the 11th. It was a bit more expensive. It was 1,700 euros but it was bigger, it was 40 meters squared. And I found this on Cé I can't remember the agency, but they seem to work a lot with foreigners. It was just recently refurbished. It was in a really cool area in the 11th, like very up and coming, trendy cafes and restaurants nearby. And it felt like I was in like an office hotel or something. Like I really didn't like the color that they chose to paint it. The furniture was very corporate. There was a really nice functioning kitchen and the agent and landlords were both there and they were so lovely. All things considered, it was just not me. I didn't see myself living there. I was being picky. Like I wanted to find somewhere that I wouldn't have to move from for a few years. Like I didn't want to go through this process again. There were some places that I saw that I could see myself there for a few months temporarily. So this apartment is kind of an example of that. I found it on Le Bon Coin. It's one of the only Le Bon Coin apartments that I considered. I can't remember the square meterage of it, but I think it was 1300 euros. It was just off Oberkampf. The location was amazing, like a really trendy area. It was in a near building, but it overlooked the boulevard. So the view was of like very traditional houseman buildings. It was also south facing and it had like, it was on a corner, so it got loads of natural light. But something about it just felt like I couldn't see myself longer than a few months like it felt a bit temporary I have this one on my okay list only because the agent was so mean and gave me absolutely zero time of day it was in such a good location it was just on Rue de Temple so at the top of Marais it was 1400 euros a month I can't remember the square meterage it was top floor it had loads of natural light it actually had a big extra storage space that you could put all your shit in very plain but furnished so I could definitely like put my own spin on it. The agent just like hated me. He from the minute we interacted I just knew that he was never ever ever gonna give me this apartment even though I messaged him a bunch about it. Yeah he ended up giving it to someone else. The next one on my okay list was a three piece. It was a really big apartment. It was 63 meters squared but at a higher price point it was 18 50 euros. This one was through an agency called Blue, I think. It was in Chateau d'Eau, which is kind of like a slightly dodgy-ish area, but it still has like a bunch of really cool restaurants and bars. But I had such a nice chat with a landlord, like we were talking for like an hour and this was a furnished apartment. It was so big, but I could really see myself there. And I love the kitchen. It would have been so good for hosting. I was the first person to see it and I had such a good rapport with the landlord that I thought I was definitely going to get it, but because he had organized it through an agency, he said that the agency has the final say after they review your dossier and they give me no reply once I sent in all my like information. Okay, sorry if some of the things changed, I had to recharge and switch the batteries. Now we're gonna get into the good list, like the ones that I was definitely considering, the ones that I was upset that I didn't get or were very, very close to. The first one, which was a very early contest was this studio in the Marais. I found this on Cé it was 1500 euros a month and 40 meters squared. It was beautiful. It looked like something out of a movie. The location was amazing. It was on that road where all the freep stars are. There were some issues with it that I really like fought over. The first one was that the apartment was fully north facing. So it meant that I would never ever get direct sunlight. That is like the most important thing that I was looking for. And also the layout of the apartment was very strange. The top end where the windows were was the bedroom studio living area. 
and then in the middle was the bathroom and then at the very back was the kitchen. So the kitchen basically got no access to the windows. There was a little window that went onto the corridor but that didn't really provide that much light. So it was really dark. Saying no to this was really difficult because he wanted to give it to me. Like he accepted Garant Me because this is one of the first apartments that I saw. I didn't want to accept something too quickly. These just appreciate this architecture and I really hope someone took it who loves it because it's such a cool apartment. I just, it just really wasn't me at that moment. Another one which I really loved, I found this one, Seloje again. It was in the tent, it was in a really cool area. It was a one bedroom, 56 meters squared. It was huge and it was 1550 euros. This was top floor, there's no elevator, so it was a lot of stairs. I wasn't expecting it to be so good, but it was beautiful. Like there were so many little inbuilt niches and parquet floors the light coming in was so nice it was fully unfurnished there was no oven no fridge no washing machine and i would have to buy all those things and as i said i'm not sure if i was ready to own those it was also my very first group viewing which is really intimidating because everyone else there was french and older mostly in couples they looked like they had stable jobs and then the icing on the cake i talked to her at the end and she said she doesn't accept people with garment mean they only accept people with French garters. The next apartment, I really thought that I was going to get it and I didn't take that many videos because I was so convinced that I had got it. I found it on Céloge, it was in the forest near Place de Vosges, which is such a beautiful area. It was an unfurnished one bedroom for 1668 and guys, this was so beautiful. The best thing about it was it had this balcony at the front that was west facing so it did get direct sunlight in the afternoon and evening and it was big enough to fit like a table and chairs like i could have hosted little like dinner parties outside i have my morning breakfast on that terrace and it had really nice like wood floors a beautiful mirror over the fireplace the few downsides where the kitchen wasn't really that good actually a lot of the square meterage was taken up with hallway space all in all a beautiful apartment and i was talking to the agent and she said that she prefers working with people who have garant me which is pretty uncommon here in paris so when me and my friend heard that we were like you're gonna get this place i was convinced I was gonna get this. I thought that someone else just had a stronger dossier and had gotten it because there were a lot of people at the viewing when we went. No, no, no. A week, maybe 10 days later, the apartment comes up on Céloge again. And so I ring up, I'm like, hey guys, hi, I applied for this. The agent was like, hey, we're so sorry. The landlord just didn't like that you were freelance. So that was frustrating and very sad because I wanted it and no one else wanted it at that point so I could have had it but they just weren't willing to give it to someone who was freelance. The next one was a one bedroom in the second and I found this on pay a pay so directly with the landlord. Photos of this online didn't look particularly nice so I wasn't expecting to go in wanting to like impress the landlord. There was so much living area. She had like wood paneling on the cabinets and the oven and microwave and stuff was all built in and it was like really really nicely done. There was a really nice bathroom, also a bedroom with a lot of closet space. It was north and south facing so it would get direct sunlight from one side of it and each of the windows had like a little balcony. The landlady was really nice. Hugo was like translating between us and kind of explaining my situation and what I did for work to her. I don't think she quite understood my job as a freelancer and I could tell that she probably just wanted someone with a CDE. It was also a very posh building so I'm sure I don't know I think I just didn't really look the part and I was also very hungover that I definitely did not present myself to the best of my standards. I wrote her a really good email, but it obviously was not enough because she said that she picked someone else. And then we have this apartment in the first. This apartment was an apartment of dreams. I phoned on Céloge, I immediately phoned her and she booked me in that afternoon. She said that she ended up only showing it to four people because they got so much demand for it and they had to take it down after like 15 minutes. This apartment was 
at the very 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 top end of my budget it was 2055 euros but it was a two bedroom and it was also really big it was 60 meters squared it was on the fourth floor beautiful building there was an elevator it was on the corner so it kind of had like a wraparound balcony again i did not do a good job at filming these i'm so sorry she said that it was south facing so it got light in all day and you can just see how beautiful this was. It also had a recently refurbished kitchen. There was two bedrooms. One of them would have been a great size for like an office or a studio. After I submitted my dossier, she was like, oh, none of your information is in French. Initially, I thought like, okay, no chances. And then a few days later, I texted her, I'm like, hey, any updates? And she said, out of the four people who viewed it, my dossier and another dossier was being considered by the landlord and he really liked my dossier. So I was like getting my hopes up for this. In the end, I obviously did not get it. I do think you know, it was for the best, maybe. Maybe it was just like too nice, too adult. For me to have, I would have had to buy a lot more furniture for it. I'm just trying to make myself feel better about the whole thing. But this place was just so amazing. Maybe in another life, I would have been living there. But for now, we are we're a studio girl like i don't need two bedrooms the next one which i really really loved was this one bedroom in a vest in the 18th i found this on pay a pay it was 38 meters square 1600 euros it was furnished but with really simple pieces that i could really make it my own and guys you'll see in the video like the view was beautiful it was just overlooking like the villagey rooftops of montmartre it was so pretty and it was i think south or west facing so it got a lot of natural light during the day this was at the point where i was like i need a flat and the landlord just really did not like me once i sent in my file she immediately came back being like no sorry and then the worst part is that a week or two later the apartment gets relisted on pay a pay so obviously no one took it from the first viewing even though I was on my knees begging her for it. This one was such a shame. It was so beautiful. It really would have worked um, and yeah. And then the last two apartments which I want to talk about because my battery is running out. Both of my front are still The first one was in the Marais. It was an insane location. Like if you looked at the window, you were looking at St. Paul, the church. I got on so well with this agent. Like we just immediately vibed. I can't really remember how much this one was for the square meterage, but I think it was about 1600 euros. Fully unfurnished. It was airy. It was bright. The location was good. I really thought that I had a good chance of it and she really, really liked me. And then after a few days, she sent me this message basically saying that the landlord had completely ghosted her and she can't get in contact with him. So I don't know what ended up happening with that one. And then the last apartment that I saw and really wanted was this one bedroom in the ninth. It was a bit more expensive, it was 1800 euros, but it was 50 meters squared and this included a south facing balcony like a big balcony that fit a table and chairs. It was also fully furnished and like ready to move into and I needed somewhere to move into at that point. And the location of it was amazing. Like the ninth is such a good area. And I was the first person to see it and he was like, okay, we do work with foreigners quite a lot. So I thought I had a good chance of it. And then no, he obviously gave it to someone else. I am happy in retrospect that I didn't end up getting that because it's like 400 more euros than what I'm paying now a month but that would have been a very good option and that balcony was so nice like you imagine summer there? My battery ran out again so we're just gonna wrap this up here. I hope this video was somewhat useful. If you have any more questions about apartment hunting leave it down below and I'll answer them in the comments and if you also have some advice on the process Leave it down below, we can help each other out. You can also send me a DM. And yeah, I do not envy you if you're currently in the process of looking for an apartment, but I wish you all the best. It will work out, I promise you. Have a lovely rest of your day, a lovely week, and I'll talk to you guys soon.